Eminem is one of the best-selling musicians of all time, not just in hip-hop, but in music as a whole. With over 200 million records sold, a hefty amount of which were before the era of streaming, it's pretty impressive that Eminem has been able to sell this much. And it goes without saying that there's plenty of Eminem media out there that you can find. But anyone who's gone through the Eminem archive has probably come across some bootleg Eminem materials. And these bootlegs have become an obsession of mine as of late, and I took a lot of time compiling some of these uh, more interesting ones together to share with you today, including two lost bootlegs, which are both interesting in their own way. So please join me as we go through the weird world of Eminem bootlegs. So the fact that Eminem has sold so many records proves that there is a market out there which are buying hard copies of Eminem's albums. And though there are just full-length bootlegs of all of his albums, there are two specific ones which are the most lucrative for anybody trying to trick a collector. That would be the Slim Shady EP and Infinite. Starting with the Slim Shady EP, this EP was Eminem's first and only EP, released December 10th, 1997. This EP was released with little to no mainstream attention under the Web Entertainment label. It was originally sold at the album release party and later in stores. Despite commercial failure of the Slim Shady EP, this is the tape that Jimmy Iovine originally heard and then gave to Dr. Dre. So yeah, this EP is basically what led to Eminem and Dre forming their super duo. So it's pretty easy to see why this tape would be so sought after. Copies of this EP were sold on CD as well as cassette and can fetch a seriously high price tag for an original copy. So with that information, I probably don't have to explain why some people would make bootleg copies of this to try to sell. There were plenty of bootlegs of this EP floating around the market. These would include bootleg CDs and cassettes, as well as a vinyl version, which is pretty weird. This vinyl was released by a company named House of Wax Records, and according to the notes on Discogs, is limited to only 300 copies. This vinyl looks incredibly well made and would trick somebody who didn't know that there was never a vinyl release into thinking this was some sort of official release of the Slim Shady EP. After doing a little bit of digging on House of Wax Records, I was able to find a website, and here on this page, they sell plenty of bootleg Eminem materials. I found bootlegs of the Slim Shady EP, stuff from Soul Intent, fan-made albums, vinyls, cassettes, and even rare releases from people from the Eminem lore, including Champ Town, Bugs, and even Chaos Kid. This is basically the one-stop shop for anybody who wants that rare Eminem shit but doesn't want to pay rare Eminem shit prices. But due to the quality of some of these items, it wouldn't shock me if people bought this and flipped it trying to pass it off as a real item. There was another item for sale on this website which is arguably the most valuable Eminem item to any collector. And that would be an original copy of Infinite. Released November 12, 1996, Infinite is Eminem's first official studio album under the Web Entertainment label. It's believed that there are only about 500 to 1000 copies of this floating around. As you could probably guess, this is a highly sought after item for any collector. And as such, copies of these can go for a very, very high price point. But if you don't have a spare two grand lying around, this website has you covered for 30 bucks. Uh, I mean pounds, 30 pounds. And that made me start thinking about how good the quality on this stuff could actually be. And I wanted to kind of do a quality check myself, so I did my due diligence and I purchased a vinyl copy of Infinite as well as a cassette copy. I waited just a couple of weeks and it eventually arrived. Now I need to say that buying bootlegged goods is technically illegal, so you don't really want to do this, but I am a journalist and the only reason I'm doing it is to journalize. Here is my official unboxing video of those materials. So I got the House of Wax Records uh, stuff. It says there's three extra flyers in here. I don't know what flyers they're talking about, but I guess we will see. So let's go ahead and open this bad boy. Thanks. Oh, my, my, my money shot. Let's see what we got here. Thank you for your purchase. Your support keeps us alive. Uh, for 10% off your next order, use code blah, blah, blah. So I'm gonna blur the code because I'm pretty sure this is just something you get with every single one. I'm not gonna put them on blast like that. So we got two items in this. First we have the vinyl and the, I assume, cassette tape. 
So let's get into the vinyl first. I'm gonna go ahead and open it. Gotta say, just by looking at it, it does look like an original uh, infinite vinyl, but that's coming from somebody who's never seen a real one in person. And then there we go. So yeah, I mean, it looks good. I mean, it looks like, it sounds, it feels like a, you know, heavy duty vinyl. But yeah, no, this is a really good quality. Um, I'm actually very surprised by that. Because uh, when you think of bootlegs, you're thinking, you know, lesser value. And now the cassette tape. Man, they use really good packaging. I'll give them that. We got the cassette tape. Look, and you guys can see the recording and the reflection. I can't get it the fuck open. Yep, side A, side B, uh, inside sleeve, outside sleeve. From what I understand, this is like a pretty much an exact replica of what you would get in a real infinite cassette tape. But yeah, no, the quality on these things is, is really shocking to me. Again, when you think of a bootleg, you're not thinking of some of this high quality shit, but I mean, there's the cassette for you. And then here's the vinyl. As I said, this is a good quality vinyl right here. So, I mean, yeah, it was a good package. So, uh, thanks. Now back to, uh, now back to room, Kobe. <laughs> While I don't necessarily support the idea of bootlegging albums, I can kind of understand why people would want replicas as long as they're not, you know, trying to pass it off as they're real. However, it's important to remember that Eminem bootlegs are only repressings of Eminem's albums, as the case with the 2003 bootleg mixtape Straight From The Lab. Straight From The Lab consisted of leaked Eminem tracks, most of which were slated to be released on the album Encore. The original leaked album saw seven previously unheard songs. These songs were Monkey See Monkey Do, We As Americans, renamed We Are Americans, Love You More, Canna Bitch, Bully, Six In The Morning, renamed to Come On In, and Haley's Revenge. You can find many different track lists for this bootleg album, however, the original had only seven songs on it. The bootleg tape began circulating in October of 2003 and was extremely popular. However, what makes this mixtape much more interesting is the story of how these songs were leaked and the cause and effect they had on Encore. The story goes that Eminem's younger brother Nathan had a friend over at Eminem's house who found a CD of incomplete tracks. The friend took the CD and the songs were eventually pressed onto this mixtape. After the leak spread far and wide, Eminem had to work overtime to combat them and since it's believed that at least some of these tracks were planned to be included on Encore, he had to make new tracks to replace the leaked ones. In an interview, Eminem stated the following, I'm cool with probably half that album. I recorded that towards the height of my addiction. I remember four songs leaked and I had to go to LA and get Dre to record new ones. I was in a room by myself writing songs in 25, 30 minutes because we had to get it done. And what came out was so goofy. That's how I ended up making songs like Rain Man and Big Weenie. They're pretty out there. If those other songs hadn't leaked, Encore would have been a different album. Ultimately, the rushed creation of tracks didn't stop the sales of the album, as the album has now sold over 10 million copies as of the posting of this video. However, the album remains highly debated amongst Eminem fans, with some calling the album the worst of his career. That was at least before Revival. But regardless of where you stand in this debate, you have to wonder what Encore would have sounded like and how we would look back on Encore nowadays had these songs not leaked. What if songs like Rain Man and Big Weenie weren't included, and instead we got Bully and We As Americans? How would we look back on Encore if that were the case? Straight From The Lab remains the biggest leak and the most popular bootleg of Eminem's career, but that definitely isn't the only leak he's ever faced. Enter Straight From The Lab Part 2. Released May 17th, 2012, Straight From The Lab Part 2 is the spiritual successor to the original Straight From The Lab mixtape and features 22 tracks, many of which were leaked, previously unheard Eminem materials. Some of the tracks you can find on this album are Cocaine, Difficult, Syllables, Oh No, and Wee Wee, amongst plenty of others. 
there's a bunch of content on this mixtape which has never officially been released by Eminem, and that's a damn shame. Cocaine is easily one of my favorite all-time Eminem tracks. While Eminem leaks remain a thing today, such as the snippet of What If I Were Gay that we heard a couple of years ago, as well as the alternate version of Things Get Worse, which features a pretty damn dark line about Rihanna, these leaks can rightfully be considered bootlegs as they are not an official Eminem release. To this day, Straight From The Lab 1 and 2 remain very dark days in the Eminem world, and it makes you wonder the musical journey that M would have taken had these songs not leaked. And now to finish up, I wanted to talk about some fan-made albums. As opposed to leaks and bootleg materials, these are mashups and other remixes made by Eminem fans which range from serious looking, serious sounding remix albums to some not so serious materials. Like, really not serious. I don't want to spend too much time talking about these in this video because there's a fine line between a fan made tape and a bootleg. But there are three fan made albums which I think can be classified as official bootlegs due to them having physical media. These three bootlegs are the Black America mixtape, the Prank Call record, and Eminem vs. Horny. Let's start with the latter bootleg. When I was going across Discogs looking for some of these bootlegs, I came across this vinyl called Eminem vs. Horny, and for some reason, it was probably the name, I was really intrigued by it. Eminem vs. Horny was said to be a mashup track which took the lyrics to Without Me and put them to the track of Horny by Mouse T. It might be Moose T, Moosey T, I don't, I don't know. But here's the thing about this mix. The official mix was nowhere to be found online that I could find. And additionally, Discogs listed the mashup as a vinyl release. Yet, I couldn't find a single picture of this vinyl anywhere online. But surprisingly, there were multiple for sale on Discogs. So, I went to order one. But honestly, the price was a bit more than I wanted to pay. Especially after I bought that House of Wax order. So instead, I asked a fellow collecting buddy of mine from the UK to buy it for me. My good buddy Aiden from Round 1 Films was more than happy to help me recover the vinyl and promptly purchased a copy for me. And just a few weeks later, he sent me pictures of the vinyl. He also sent me an official video recording of this vinyl. So ladies and gentlemen, are you prepared to hear the official lost but now found thanks to me version of Eminem vs. Horny? Well, if you're ready, here you go. I didn't really want to play more because I didn't want to risk copyright, but if you would like to hear more, I did upload the full recording onto a separate YouTube channel, and the link is in the description. But yeah, this release just illustrates the random, sometimes incomprehensible, obscure nature of some of these releases. Speaking of incomprehensible, one bootleg record that has always been interesting to me is the Eminem Prank Call record. Now I spoke about this record on the Eminem Iceberg, and it's something that genuinely made me curious for years. This record is said to feature 14 tracks of Eminem prank calls and has practically little to no information you can find on its original release. To this day, I cannot figure out when it was released, where it was released, as well as why it was released. To me, the obscurity of this release is, is fascinating. But for as obscure as this one is, there are plenty more out there which are even more obscure. The fact that this release has any information known about it at all, including a Discogs page, makes it one of the more well-known Eminem bootlegs, which I think illustrates perfectly the sheer amount of bootlegs that are out there to be discovered. The final of these bootleg albums is one that's been discussed on forums since its initial release in 2009. That mixtape is the Black America mixtape. The first and main thing people discuss about this mixtape is the extremely graphic album artwork. The album cover is pretty difficult to explain while maintaining monetization, so just look it up and see for yourself. But other than that, the album featured remixes of Eminem tracks as well as just completely stolen Eminem materials. A handful of these were on YouTube, and after listening to some of them, you're able to see that these remixes are extremely low quality. But to me, that just kind of added to the mystique of this mixtape. This album has always had a mysterious lore surrounding it since its initial release, so I decided to try to go down the rabbit hole, to not only learn more about it, but also try and find the full mixtape. Looking at the pictures on Discogs, the back cover features links for a company by the name of Stackhouse Recordings, one of which was the MySpace page for Stackhouse Recordings. I visited that page on the Wayback Machine, and there I found the official website, stackhouserecordings.com. 
When I visited the site, I was met with this gossip type news page which delved into many different genres. But as I scrolled down, it had a list of mixtapes which were quote, in stores now. This section featured an image of Black America, which was accompanied by the text 2010 Southern Entertainment Awards Mixtape of the Year. When I went to the Southern Entertainment Awards website, I was able to find that it did in fact win an award. I went back and I clicked on the album and it took me to an archived Twitter page for a man named Blake Gaston. Gaston? Gaston? Blake Gaston. I'm gonna go with Gaston. This guy Blake was my only lead on Stackhouse. After a bit of searching, I found him on Instagram, shot him a message, and I waited for a response. In the meantime, I kept searching for a way to find the full mixtape, including lurking through eBay for Eminem mixtapes, and surprisingly, I eventually found a listing for a lot of 10 bootleg Eminem mixtapes. And in the very back of this listing seemed to be the Black America mixtape. So I went ahead and I bought this lot and began the process of waiting for it to arrive. While I was waiting, I got an official response back from Blake, which simply said, Hey, what's up? Thanks for the memories. And yes, I did create that CD a while ago. So yeah, I found the guy who made the Black America mixtape. But I did try to ask him some follow-up questions, including why he chose that cover, and I never got a response. Who knows why he never got back to me, but maybe someday we can figure out why exactly that was the cover he went with. Even though getting the creator to speak to me was a letdown, I still had this stack of mixtapes to look forward to. When I got these tapes, it included plenty of other mixtapes including Invasion, Machiavelli vs. Mathers 2, and The Sorcerer's Apprentice. But of course, the main thing I was looking forward to was the Black America tape. Seeing as how this tape was nowhere online, I was excited to have the very rare full-length version of it and was excited to check it out, which I promptly did. It was a huge letdown. I think the track that perfectly paints the picture of the quality of these mashups is the opening track, Black America. The track opens up with none other than Barack Obama. <laughs> Meanwhile, Eminem shouts, America! in between the speeches. Once the Obama speech is done, we hear the verse from White America, along with some other crudely put together verses. And yeah, it just sounds like shit. That's just one track of 34. And I listened to the entire thing. All 74 minutes. I listened to it all. Luckily, there was a handful of stolen tracks which let me enjoy some actual music as opposed to the other garbage. Despite the hell of listening to it, I wanted to post it and share it for all you guys. So I ripped the mixtape and prepared to drop it anonymously for you beautiful souls. But I shit you not, the day, the, the very day before I went to post it, a video popped up in my recommended. And this video was the full Black America mixtape. Honestly, I was pretty disappointed that I lost the race to upload the Black America tape first. And that's why this video is just now coming out. I had to figure out what was going to be the finale to this video. But then, I started thinking about what happened to me, and how I had part of my project taken from me late into production. And I realized, this is exactly what happened to Eminem with Encore. Similar to how Eminem had tracks leak and had to scramble to make something new, I had to figure out how I was going to finish this video. Now listen, obviously Eminem's project had many more eyes on it, so the situation was probably much more stressful to him, but I find there's something poetic in a video about stolen materials ending with my materials quote unquote being stolen. Irony is a bitch. As always, guys, thank you so much for joining me on this journey. We're doing a giveaway at 5,000 subscribers. We don't know what it is yet, but it's going to be it's going to be good. And you guys are going to want to enter it. So subscribe now. And that's all we have for this episode. So I guess I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Peace. That was lame. I didn't like how I did that. Let's let's do a different uh outro. Peace.